In our previous video, we defined what the gravitational potential is, is a scalar field, and the gradient of it gives us the gravitational field. And we also set up this integration that says that we can get the value of the potential by integrating along an arbitrary path from some point to the point of interest at a distance r here. In this video, we'll actually work out this integral. Uh, so to do that, we'll first set it up in a convenient way. Now, since the integral is our independent of the path that we take, we'll try to choose the most convenient path for evaluating this integral. So if we're over here at this point and we integrate from here to the point of interest r, we're traveling in the space and r is changing, phi is changing, theta is changing if we're using a spherical coordinate system. The most convenient path to take would be the one in which, say, only one of those variables is changing. So, first of all, we'll define this arbitrary point A. We'll pick the most convenient point for it. And the one that gives us the most convenient path. So it turns out, since it's arbitrary, the most convenient point to pick is actually at infinity. Some point well beyond the boundaries of the space, at infinity, we could put it it's essentially all points at infinity around the space, so I can't really draw that, but let's say this point here stands for A is infinity, so an infinite distance from the origin. And we take the path in which only R is changing. So our dr here is actually just equal to negative r hat dr. And that's going to make it much more convenient to evaluate this integral here. So when we work this out here, now we'll put in our g field here. So we have our negative integral from a to r of g, so we'll put in the g field now, negative g m over r squared r hat And then we'll dot it with our dr, which is actually equal to r hat dr. Here. So now then we have a negative sign over here to account for this negative sign right here. So these negative signs cancel out. r hat dot r hat is just equal to 1. So a scalar value of 1, and we'll take the limit of this integral, so we'll take the limit as a approaches infinity of the integral from a to r of g m over r squared dr. So now this is an improper scalar integral. If you work that out, you'll find out that u as a function of r So we do have another I forgot a negative sign right here. So we still had a negative here out front. So this negative cancelled with this one, so we had another, but we had another negative from the piece of our path. So now we have a negative sign out front of this, but when we evaluate the integral, we get another negative sign. So ultimately we end up with just g m over r. And 
that's when we call the gravitational potential. So notice that that's a scalar field. And that's convenient uh, often when we're solving gravity problems. It's easier to work with a scalar, evaluate what the gravitational potential is, and then if we want to get the gravitational field vector, we just take the gradient of, the, uh, of this scalar field. So often that makes it a little bit easier to evaluate. Okay. So in this video, we defined what is the uh, scalar gravitational potential field. For a point mass at the origin, m here. In the next video of this sequence, we'll look at how do we actually work this out for a an arbitrarily shaped object that might have variations in mass over it, or variations in density. Thank you.